and we'll take a quick photo op if we can. Yeah, we'll do a quick photo op. Uh, yeah, you know what that picture is. Uh, can we let the TVs get it first? Thank you. I'm just looking straight at the red light. You guys good in the back? All right, any uh, iPhones and otherwise? Real cameras? All right. Thank you, guys. You go first. Thank you, Coach Kelly. Appreciate Coach Brom and Coach Kelly joining us this morning for our head coach press conference ahead of the She's at Citrus Bowl tomorrow afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern, Camping World Stadium, uh, Purdue and LSU. We'll start with a, a couple of brief head statement or head coach opening statements, and then move on to questions from the crowd. We'll start with you, Coach Brown. Yeah, uh, this is, uh, first off, the, the Citrus Bowl experience has been uh, magnificent for our team. Um, you know, we worked really hard to get to this point. It's uh, the big time bowl game, big time atmosphere. Um, just all the events, all the uh, excitement leading up to this game, uh, to be able to go against a, a big time opponent in, in LSU, a team that uh, got to the SEC championship game. Uh, it's going to be a, a big time challenge for us. Um, but we are looking forward to that challenge and for that opportunity. Um, and, and our guys are, are super excited uh, to be in this game and uh, are thankful to be here. We, we uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, they're chopping at the bit to get out there. Well, Happy New Year. Um, and uh, 2023 uh, starts off with, uh, you know, I think uh, a great matchup between Purdue and LSU. And, and want to thank um, Florida Citrus Sports, uh, certainly um, Cheese at Citrus Bowl, and, and um, congratulate Purdue and, and Brian Baum. They've obviously done a, a great job this year to get here, played in the Big Ten championship game. Um, and I think we've all seen how good the, the Big Ten is um, uh, watching games over the last 24 hours. So it'll be a great challenge for our team as well. I mean, look, you know, these, these games uh, really show uh, what your program's about. You know, they're difficult in a sense that, you know, you're preparing with, um, you know, sometimes your roster does not have all your players. And um, these guys want to play. And, and that's the great part about it. Uh, the guys that are going to be out on that field want to be there, uh, want to represent their universities, and and want to play the game the right way. And so, uh, as coaches, that's all we want. We want guys that that love to play, um, love to compete, and I think you're going to see two teams that want to be there uh, and want to play uh, to their very best. So it should be an exciting matchup. And uh, as as coach mentioned, uh, we're excited about being in this um, this game as well. All right, if you have questions for either or both coaches, raise your hand. We'll start with Kyle down front and we'll go to the second row. Uh, Happy New Year, gentlemen. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Um, Coach Brom, let me start with you. I'm going to have a question for each of you, but uh, let me start with you, Coach Brom. Uh, you guys are both obviously division champions in your own right, but if you could put some shine on your season, what it is you're most proud of that you've accomplished so far? You know, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a very good year for, for us here at Purdue. Um, you know, our team is resilient. Uh, we had some ebb and flow to the season. Uh, but, um, you know, our quarterback play was phenomenal. Aiden O'Connell was a big reason that we get here. Uh, he did a great job. Obviously, he's not playing in this game today or tomorrow, um, uh, but, but, but he was very good uh, all season long. Our defense uh, did a really good job all year. Coach, uh, Coach English and, and those guys and Coach Hagan's taking over uh, for the bowl game, but th they played well all season long, uh, had some big, big victories throughout the season that um, really all parts of our our team had to defense stepped up and one you know so the Minnesota game defense stepped up and Minnesota game gets that big victory offense steps up in some other games and and and, and makes uh, the, the team come to victory so uh, there were a lot of games this year that could have went either way right a lot of them pretty much all of them could have went either way uh, that we had this season so uh, our team uh, did a good job of digging down deep, finding ways to win, um, and to, to get to the position to be in the Big Ten championship game. We obviously 
Uh, we need a little help there at the end. Um, to those, it was a, f a fun last week of the season to, to get to that, that Big Ten championship game and uh, to finish off beating our rival, beating IU, uh, to seal that thing up and, and to get into the game was, was special. And uh, I think it was, a, it was a big moment in the program uh, to get to the Big Ten championship game. Obviously, we wanted to win that thing and, and, and give it our best effort. But, um, you know, I thought, we, I thought we fought hard against Michigan and, and, and played fairly well. It, they were the better team that day. And uh, our guys now are, um, you know, we had some of the, the top players opt out. So now you're going to get to see some guys that, that were behind waiting in the wings that are, are good football players that are ready to play. And uh, they're ready to get on the field and show what they can do. And Coach Kelly, welcome back uh, to the Citrus Bowl. Obviously, uh, coaching for a team that you've beaten in the past as your, your previous stop there. But same for you. Put some uh, shine on your uh, first season at LSU and uh, what helped you get here. Well, I think <clears throat> it would start with my first press conference, where uh, my my uh, first uh, meeting with our team, not press conference, and that was that uh, we wanted to restore the pride in our program. You know, certainly finishing last uh, the year before, and then, you know playing for the SEC championship and finishing first in the West, you know, going from last to first would probably encapsulate, you know, the success that we had during the year. Um, you know, we, uh, we bounced back, uh, as uh, Brian talked about. We had uh, a team that was uh, resilient. We lost our opener in a very difficult fashion. Um, but came back and, and played really good football through most of the season. And then you know, maybe ran out of a little, ran, ran out of gas at the end. Um, but again, I think the the team itself um, found ways to win, uh, and um, I think you know fought for four quarters, and and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a team that's going to compete for four quarters, keep playing, um, and in our first year, you know, um, making sure that you've got the foundational principles down in terms of what you want to do. So. That's how I would encapsulate it. Was that the second row here and then back to the right the next one? Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Happy New Year. For both coaches, um, there's so much focus these days placed on the playoff, playing for national championship, uh, and especially as that playoff expands in a couple of years um, and brings in more teams. What value do you see in a bowl game like such as this that isn't part of the playoff? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, th this, this bowl... The bowl experience, I think, is is uh, is very big for the development of your program. In, in my opinion, uh, you get those extra practices, you get them in a big time atmosphere, um, and they get a reward kind of at the end of the, end of the year. And I, I know now we're moving towards uh, the playoff expanding, which I think is great. Uh, I think more teams that you can get in there, they can get that type of experience and get rewarded for their season and have a chance. Uh, you know, to, to win the national title um, after a great season, even if you had maybe one hiccup early on or you had a, a, a couple tough losses. But there's some really good football teams playing in these bowl games that are outside of, um, you know, the playoff right now, the, the, the 14 playoff that, that could easily, I think, go through the thing and win it at the end of the year. And when you talk about you watch like an NFL playoff, right? Um, Teams go through the season in different ways. So teams that are really strong at the beginning of the year, you might have some attrition, some injury. Um, so teams are a little bit different at the end of the year. I think a, a bigger playoff uh, will reward those teams that are able to develop, keep it together, and to peak at the end. So it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit different setup when you have a bigger, bigger field for sure. But these bowl games right now, I think great for development of the program, developing the young guys. Uh, getting that extra work uh, and giving them a reward at the end of the year uh, if you fail to make the playoff but have a, have a great season. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, it's program development. So, you know, when people look at it from, you know, 35,000 feet, they go, well, you know, what's, you know, what are these bowl games about? It's your program. Um, it's developing the, the players within your program. It's it's building morale, it's building camaraderie, it's uh, relationships with coaches and players. Um, all those things matter because you're, you're with them more time than you are at any point during the season because there's no academics, right? They're, they're not in class. 
So, you know, building those relationships is invaluable. So that matters. And a lot of people don't see that. And this game matters to, you know, those that choose not to play in the game, you know, that's their choice. But there's another side to this. Um, those that are making decisions on who goes on to the next level and where they're drafted, this game is watched, okay? This game matters. So if, if you're putting film out there, um, if you're developing – uh, and you're getting a chance to practice, uh, that's a whole lot more important than trying to work on your 40 time. Uh, and a lot of guys don't see that because they just hear, hey, you got to run a good time at the combine. And what they need to do is put good film out there. And this gives them another opportunity to put film out there to develop their craft in practices over a three week period of time so it's program development, it's individual development that make these bowl games so, so important. And, and that doesn't even you know, take into consideration um, how these uh, incredible bowls put together a, a fun week of activities for these guys as well. So um, they're, they're really, really important. We'll go to the back riser on the left. Uh, my question is for Coach Brom. Uh, what has Drew Brees brought to your program, both tangible and maybe inspirational, or both? Uh, Drew's been fantastic. Uh, he's come in um, with a lot of energy. Um, you know, he's been uh, working with the offense, with the quarterback room. Uh, he's been in with those guys every single day. He's been in with us, uh, breaking down film, having suggestions on plays on the offense, on, on ways about doing things, and uh, really the the – the best thing I think that he's brought is his mindset, the way that he attacks the game each and every week, the way that he goes out and tries to get greatness. Uh, and to be able to be by Austin Burton, to be by Michael Limo, to be by our quarterbacks, uh, to feed them that information, uh, those little tips of the trade, uh, has been phenomenal. Uh, it's been really good. Uh, I know I've been taking notes uh, every single day about uh, his thoughts and his process. I've, I've had my guys writing down every single drill that he's come up with that uh, that could help us all get better uh, because obviously he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's done that at a high level, um, and he has a lot of great input. Uh, and just, just the team in general, um, just having a guy that loves Purdue, that's, you know, this is a little bit different time, obviously, with my brother leaving and some of the coaches leaving. Um, you know, trying to keep it all together, keep these guys focused on one goal. It's been good to have someone that – they know is all all about Purdue uh, in there with them, bringing that energy, bringing that fight. Uh, so he's he's been uh, he's been exceptional uh, and been great to have around. We'll go front left and back to the riser again. Uh, Coach Kelly, uh, who are some guys that took that step forward? You know, getting to move into bigger roles in practice, not just for Monday, but maybe moving into their off season. You know, I, I'd probably say, you know, when you're looking at you know, our defense, you know, a guy like uh, Savion uh, Jones, who, you know, played well for us, but now, you know, gets an opportunity to start. You know, you see during the year flashes, but now you see him consistently and and know what kind of player you have there. Um, it's been fun to watch him, you know, compete every single day. Um, I think on the offensive side, you know, a guy like Anthony Bradford, who, you know, didn't play a lot last year and has continued to develop every single day. Every And as I mentioned earlier, these practices um, are important for their development as well. We had a lot of guys that needed time. John Emery, uh, another guy that, that heralded player uh, that didn't play a lot of football, um, that is probably, you know, hitting his peak, if, if you will, in terms of um, how he's playing right now in these bowl preparations. So these are guys that are well known in a sense, but have give, been given this opportunity now to to really uh, get the reps necessary, and um, they, they've been they've been outstanding. Um, and I'd say a guy like Brian Anderson, you know, who now with uh, you know the opportunity he has taking reps with the first team every day. Um, you, you see the skill set he has. So, as Brian mentioned, you know you got some outstanding players that are not playing, right? But with that comes opportunity for others, 
and maybe they had smaller roles that now they have significant roles and you're watching them on a day-to-day -day basis and it's kind of fun to see them grow too. We'll go back center and then we'll go right on the aisle. My uh, question is for Coach Kelly. Coach, obviously one of the things that came out uh, before the game and everything is that Kayshawn Booty declared for the draft. Um, when did you guys uh, know about that he was either going back and forth about that decision or that he had made it? And then what was your initial, I guess, advice to him? And then, of course, your reaction. I, I think he's been going back and forth, you know, you know, pretty much all year. You know, it was, um, you know, we felt like, you know, he he just needed to get some clarity in terms of, remember now, <laughs> all this that stuff happens with trying to get draft grades, you know, we're prepared for the bowl, we're on the road recruiting, you know, you, you there's a lot of balls in the air at once. And, and you want to give your guys the best counsel as well as to, you know, where they may go in the NFL draft. So we're trying to compile all that information for him while he's trying to make the best decision. Um, and, and I just think, you know, for, um, for him, uh, he needed to get all that information. And once he did, he made the best decision uh, for him. And we support him 100%. We're excited for him. And, um, you know, he's ready. He'll, 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 um, he'll have a great career. We're Matt on the right, and then we'll go back to the right. Side. Yeah, this question is for both coaches. Roster management obviously has been a big key issue over the last couple of years. But how challenging was it this, this month with the transfer portal, recruiting, bowl preparation, kind of all that together in, in a short window for you guys to prepare for this game. You got that one. Yeah, ours has been, uh, ours has been obviously very unique, um, just with uh, obviously Jeff uh, taking the Louisville job and a uh, number of coaches going right away with him. Um, and then you have the whole time period of there's not a head coach, a new head coach hired, so that the rest of the coaches on staff are you know, they're concerned about where they're going or, or, or if they have a job, right, uh, after the bowl game. So um, very interesting uh, set of circumstances. Um, then players, obviously, uh, trying to figure out who the new coach is going to be. Are they going to stay at Purdue? Do they want to go put their name in the uh, portal and see where they can get to and see where they can go? Um, on top of just the normal transfer portal uh, drama that, that every team is going through that uh, guys might want to just get in there and, and see where they can go. So definitely been a very uh, uh, influx time. Um, obviously, we had the, the opt-outs, uh, the guys, uh, the, the senior guys going uh, to take their talents to the next level and, and opting out of the game. So uh, a lot of flux, fluctuations, but uh, I think we've done a good job of holding it together, putting together, uh, elevating some guys on staff that are going to take some bigger roles. Uh, we're kind of on a skeleton crew. Uh, basically, uh, all the QCs are basically elevated up to full-time coaches. And um, but but I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping that together. Um, you know, once we figured out who all was opting out and who's playing, um, able to put a great game plan together, get these guys ready to go. And the the, the guys that are playing are super. Ex they're excited to play. Like they want to play in this game. They're ready to go. They want to show what they can do. Uh, definitely guys that haven't had as much uh, action throughout the year. And uh, even guys that have elevated roles. You know, um, Charlie Jones opts out of the, the number one receiver. So that receiver room actually had a little bounce, you know, a little jump in their step, a little bounce in their step. Like, we're going to get some more footballs uh, spread out around a little bit. So uh, there's some excitement. Uh, and, and it's definitely um, different than the team that played the entire season, right? You got some different aspects, um, but these guys are excited to play. It's a unique opportunity. It's a great opportunity for a lot of these guys to showcase what they can do. Uh, and even our coaching staff, you know, every, myself included, everyone elevated up, uh, have an opportunity uh, to showcase, you know, what they're all about as well. Um, so uh, I, feel, I feel good about where our team is at, our preparation. Uh, there's a lot of excitement about this game. Go to the back, Melissa Seeley. Yeah, right here, Melissa Thomas, Florida National News, uh, towards the back. Um, and this question is for for both coaches. Um, Coach Kelly, you'd mentioned you know the difference between normal football and, and a playoff game like this, or like a, a bowl game like this, is 
there's a lot more focus. There's no, no academics or anything that the players have to worry about. Do you notice a rise in their level of, their level of enthusiasm when they're training for a bowl game versus a regular season game? Um, yes and no. I mean, you know, part of the, the, the training happens, you know, during exams and, you know, there's a bit of fatigue. Uh, so you're kind of managing that a little bit in the front end. But as you as you give them that break uh, to go home for the holidays and you come back to the bull site, there's definitely a renewed energy because they know it's just football and then I get to go to the theme park or I get to hang out and, and relax at the pool, whatever. So there, there is an energy that you see um, when you get to the bull site that, that's kind of different. But, you know, there's three weeks here that – you know, you have to manage it too. Like if you come out of the blocks and, and just, you know, try to go back to camp, um, you know, it, it's it's too much practice. And, and you, you might, in our situation, um, you know, our depth is a, an issue. So you've got to be careful in the way you, you prepare or you're going to have guys injured. We couldn't afford to lose anybody, you know, to a, a bull prep injury. So... I think there's a, my answer would be there's a balancing act that you have to do in these preparations uh, for bowl games. But when you get to the site, it, it better be business. Okay. We'll go another one in the back. Coach Kelly, here, uh, Coach Kelly here in the back. Um, I want to ask you about NIL. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of it's the Wild West, no one's policing it. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that? And, you know, no one – we haven't heard of anyone or the NCAA stepping up to, you know, discipline anyone on that yet. So when will that happen and who's watching out for this stuff? Well, I don't expect it to happen. Um, you know, look, there's, there's no uniformity, right? I think we all know that. Each state has a different law relative to enacting uh, NIL. Um, look, uh, <laughs> I, we love the concept as coaches. Everybody loves the concept of, of players being able to um, benefit from their name, image, and likeness. You know, it's the unintended consequences of it. Um, and, and, and that is inducements um, prior to being on campus through recruiting, um, unfulfilled promises. Um, and, and so I, I think we have to be in it a little bit longer uh, in this cycle for it to kind of take a better shape because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I think, I think players are led to believe that they're going to get X and it's really not X. Um, you know, they have to perform services for X and, um, you know, you're, you're hearing in the recruiting um, uh, wars that guys are getting X for, for it, it's this is not pay for play and and you're hearing stories like that so we're gonna have to see how this works itself out but we're not looking that the NCAA is going to step in at any any time here that we're gonna have to continue to manage this and I think what you'll see is the conference is beginning to take more action uh, on NIL as well take one on the right second row hey, yeah Brian um you coached against Purdue, I think, six times while you were in South Bend last year, including. Just sort of give us your impressions of, of, of Purdue football and what do you think about Purdue football? Physical, um, well-coached, um, innovative offensively, um, and, and, you know, kind of that sense that, um, you know, always playing with a chip on their shoulder. Um, and so they're going to play hard. They're going to play physical for four quarters. Uh, and, and they've always been, like I said, innovative, um, creative on offense, and a difficult opponent. Um, every time I've played them, it's, it's, been, it's been a tough game. And expect the same again. We'll take one in the back, then we'll go over here center left. Coach Kelly, in what ways have you seen Harold Perkins grow as an athlete mentally and physically during his freshman year? Just learning the game itself. There's a discipline to playing the position in which he plays. Um, look, I mean, I, I don't – everybody's seen him play that, that follows us. Um, there's no doubting his physical 
uh, ability, but you know, there's with that comes responsibility as well. And I think he understands the responsibility of, of harnessing that incredible athleticism um, and, and that being in particular structure within the defensive structure. So, you know, part of it's on, on us to not handcuff him, if you will, right? Let him play. But on the other side of it, there's, there's on him, the growth has to be, I'm learning this position and I know um, the discipline that's required within the 11 guys on the field. So I think that's the growth that we've seen, um, that he's understanding that as we've gone along through the year. Get on the left side, four rows back. Coach Kelly, um, obviously last year, uh, covering the bowl game last year, the focus was how many players you, LSU has available, and it wasn't very right. many. I assume you have a few more this year, but can you tell us how many scholarship players do you have uh, for this game? It's 65, um, so we're – we're chock full of players. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do with all of them. Uh, yeah, we're in a better position. Certainly last year was somewhere in the 39 range. I think they had 39 scholarship players um, in, in the, uh, the bowl game last year. Um, look, we're not where we need to be, certainly. Um, but we're in a, you know, there, there are some units that are at critical um, and, and we're going to have to be very fortunate and, and uh, manage it. Um, I want to be in this game next year, whether it's a bowl game or a playoff game, with, with a better roster situation. Let's leave it at that. We'll go back to the back on the left. Um, Coach Kelly, <laughs> I just blanked on my question. Um, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. The roster status that Purdue is dealing with and the opt-outs, are you expecting a heavy dose of the run game, and what do you see in their run game? Well, I mean, look, it's our job to prepare for everything, right? Um, you know, they've got, you know, a talented quarterback. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we got a chance to watch a little bit of film uh, on him. He's got talent. He's got arm talent. He's uh, he's He's got – tools around them. They've lost some, obviously, really good ones. Um, but we have to be prepared for run game, pass game. You know, we can't say, well, they're not going to run the football. The, the, the running back is big and physical. Um, so I think when we go into it, we, we don't say, listen, they're not going to throw the football or they're going to run the football. We have to be balanced defensively and, and be prepared. In the game, if, if it turns to be this looks like the way they're going to attack us, we can make adjustments within the game itself. But I expect a, a very similar Purdue offense that's going to be creative, that's going to look to be balanced, um, take shots down the field, and, and kind of run their offense the way they've been running it. We'll do two up here and then one more in the back. Um, for Coach Brom, um, with all the opt-outs on the offensive side of the ball, um, who are some players who are going to be stepping into a bigger role and um, have, a, have a larger role? In yeah, game? you obviously start with the quarterback. Uh, you know, Aiden O'Connell has opted out and after a tremendous career. Um, but uh, Austin Burton uh, is stepping up. He's a six-year uh, senior, a uh, guy who decided to come back for that six year, knowing that he would be the backup, uh, just waiting for – this type of opportunity. It was a what if, a what if opportunity, right? So he, he came back knowing I'm going to be the backup. I might not play. Um, and I'm going to be here if, if uh, something happens to O'Connell, uh, then I'll get my shot. Uh, so it's a guy that's been waiting on his opportunity, been waiting on that shot. He started out at UCLA, uh, came to us after three seasons to compete for the starting job, and has been a uh, model teammate, um, great leader for our team. Uh, and he has some he has some ability, so uh, I'm I'm excited to uh, have him out on the field and let him showcase what he can do. Uh, obviously, a Payne Durham opt out at tight end, so uh, Paul Pafferi is going to have to step up and play a bigger role. And he's played uh, he's played quite a bit for us this year. But uh, that second tight end spot will be uh, Drew Bibber, uh, who hasn't played much uh, yet, uh, but he's got some athletic ability. He's got some talent, so he's going to. He's going to have to play a little bit for us and, and show us what he can do. And obviously, with Charlie Jones um, opting out at receiver, that just bumps the receiver room up one notch. So 
uh, you know, T.J. Sheffield's the, the, the guy who had the, the most targets uh, uh, after him. So uh, obviously he's going to step up and roll, and the guys behind him got to step it up a notch as well. Uh, so like I said, those guys are excited for that opportunity. Um, they've been working for it for their whole lives, right, to, to be able to be in that spot. So uh, it's an exciting time for them to be in this game. One on the aisle here, and then we'll close the phone back. Uh, Coach Kelly, uh, here, real quick. Uh, is John Emery coming back then next season? We haven't made that. He hasn't made that decision yet. Okay. Um, and then why specifically would uh, Kayshawn have been unavailable for this game even before he declared for the draft? Unavailable, as you know, um, means I can't speak to you know some of the reasons behind it, or I would have been more specific. So um, when we when we issue a statement using the word unavailable, we can't get into some of the specifics. Close the back. Okay, uh, Coach, how is uh, Nussmeier enjoying the Cheese It Room, and how's that going for him? This trip? You know, he uh, I think he has had his. Um, Best week of practice uh, as a cheese it um, uh, I, I would say dweller. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he's, uh, listen, I mean, it's I think it's a great um, thing uh, that the the bull does and, and and allows them to profit off of it and, and nil um, and and they've taken full advantage of it uh, through social media. So it's it's been really fun. The guys have enjoyed it. A report from Tyrone. Tyrone's loved it, man. He uh, was in there taking pictures the, the whole first day, and uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's had some people in there to check it out because it's uh, it's a pretty cool deal to have have that whole room decked out. He hasn't invited me to come look at it no, yet, though, I, so I, 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 I need to get the invite that. and you go check it out. All right, well, we thank you both for your time this morning. Happy New Year! Thank and, you. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you. Appreciate your time. Yep.